In the Army back in 1958, and I bought a PR3 in Germany, and I brought that car back home. Our family car, 63, I heard about there's a racetrack here at Greenwood. So we drove down as a spectator, and I got the pamphlet and the brochure and everything of the second race in 1953. And I said, man, I can do this. I've got the car. I could do this. So, mother, wherever she's standing, over here, nice lady, very nice lady. We had two kids at that time. She said, okay. Well, how good is that? Yeah. Uh, so, we found a... Uh, what did I find? We went to... Uh, Bloomington, Minnesota, for drivers, novice drivers training. Ron Sharp was in the same class I was, and uh, I think five or six other guys from Iowa were in the same class. Hey, hey Chuck, can you try to talk a little louder? Louder? Yeah. <laughs> if I turn my hearing aids down, I could probably talk louder. No. But I'll try. Anyhow, we. Uh, Went to Bloomington. I was on the fire department. A guy, a fireman, had a boat trailer, and he had a couple of these steel loading ramps with the bump, 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 bumps on them, you know. We bolted that onto the frame of this boat trailer, so we put the Triumph on the trailer. Now it had the muffler on it, it had stock cars, that was, uh, it ran good. I had to take the windshield off. I made a little plastic windshield. They had little bolt holes in the dash. You could bolt it onto. And we went to Bloomington to race. Got through driver's school. Came back in 64. We brought that car here to Greenwood in September. And we were running the race and this little bitty car, three cylinder went pop, 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 pop as he got off the gas. You guys remember those cars? I think they were uh, foreign engines. And he and I had a nice race going on except he wouldn't get out of my way. I would go too deep in the corners. I wanted to anyhow. And he wouldn't. He'd slow down. So I tried to pass him right down uh, turn two. You know, you've been on the track today. Turn one's kind of a sweeper. Turn two is the last turn before you go straight north. And he just leaned over against me, and I went down the hill. Okay, that ended 64. I had to do radiator. So when you hit the bottom, it was sunny. Guys don't like to talk about the races they don't win. <laughs> okay, I come back. This is it, bro. May of 65. A CCA regional race. Raining like muddy. The, the paddock area, you guys that have been there, you know it was just greasy. It's, I had by that time some blue streaks, nice wide blue streaks. And you just maul your way through the gumbo to get to the track and run that race. We practice laps, we come back in, and my son now, Randy's over here. He was six years old, and he had a job. His job, he said, and he told me this, this job was to clean the mud off the tires before I got to the racetrack again. So he was in this racing car. We did run that race to a finish, and we got uh, third place in class. One of these two. <laughs> Remember these kind of trophies? Do they still give them today? Glass bottom. Okay, we did come back again in 64. 
65, 66 then, 66. Another national race in July. And really had a nice time, we had good weather. Had a lot of good racing here. Second place I got in Triumph class, whatever class that was, it was either F production or E production. They did some swapping right there, I'm not just sure. So anyhow, that's uh, some of the stuff you did now. About the track, some of you people have haven't raced on the track. Uh, it was a very fast track. It's too damn narrow. Uh, what would happen, they grouped our cars together and tried to keep them basically the same speed with different classes. Some of the classes were just outstandingly loud and fast. And they go by us like we were peeking out of the way. And if it was cracked in there, you felt like, boy, I'm lucky to get out of here alive. So that was okay. Uh, what else do we have here? The hardest part when I was racing on this track, after you come out of the north end and you come through that little low flat right there and then start up the hill, you're coming up that hill and you're trying to go as fast as you can and you can't see anything. The track just disappeared because, and it turned, all right? So think of that going 55 miles an hour in the PR2. Let's think what them Corvettes and them guys were doing at 85 miles an hour. You know, really, uh, you had to keep your paper down. <laughs> uh, yeah. The one thing I do remember about amateur racing, the, the, the thing was, don't hit anybody. This is gentlemen's racing, and this was the thing. We're not here, there's no money. This is gentlemen's racing, and that was what that starts out to be. And I think it's pretty much that way you need to What racing is that, man? Our tow car finally ended up at a 54 Pontiac station wagon. Really a nice car. And I built my own trailer with the end of all the cars. Made a good combination. And I didn't have to use the camper here at Greenwood. You know, I was only 35 miles from home to come to race. How good is that? Otherwise, Road America was like all night. Uh, Winsfield was another all night. And I'd get off work at 5 o'clock and we get on the road and get to Road America like seven in the morning. We take the camper there and get I had it on top of the car and it folded open like a double chip. Not bad. We were in the, we camped in the we could have camped here the same way, but we camped in the farm fields and had all these racers there. You if you guys never been to Road America, you know what Camp Reynolds I'm talking about. So we'd climb in a tent up a ladder, have it all opened up, and go to bed because we're going to the race next day. These guys sitting around bonfires drinking beer. And what do you hear? I wonder what would happen if we closed that tent on there. <laughs> you know, you have a lot of fun experiences with the Well, anyhow, that's kind of what I had to open up the stories with. And let's got, we've got some other racer drivers here that if you have questions, pop it up, or maybe they can expound like I do. Thank you very much. So tonight the uh, other racers come on up, we'll have a whole panel. Uh, oh, sorry, Zenas. Anybody got any more? Any questions now? Hey, here we go. What did they charge you to enter a race? I think it was thirty-five dollars. <laughs> it was reasonable then. Sit down there, Dean Elder. You both real quick, just introduce yourselves and then we'll take some questions. I'm, uh, I'm Blake Shepard, and I come to the first race here in 63 as a spectator. And in 64, I come up here with a Sprite. And in 
six eighties uh, during the whole story about this break. Anyway, uh, when I first started racing there, we were basically on airport courses and standing starts. I got up here, we had the first rolling starts. So that was kind of a new experience. Just the guy in front of me didn't get on the throttle right away. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I was kind of an experience. I didn't have enough gas, uh, didn't put enough gas in my Sprite to finish the race. So I got through about half of it. And then I come into the pits and then went into the paddock and filled up with gas. And I'm coming back out. And that's when the chief steward come up and said, and any of you remember him? That was Bud Severson. And I simple division. He was no God. And, uh, so he said, you're done, son. And I said, okay. So I, I kept my helmet on, I didn't make a fuss, and when the race was over and you had to get your law book signed, I come up to Bud and I said, I need to get this signed. He said, how'd you do in the race? I thought I was a little pack. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so in 65, I showed up, uh, I was all ready to get a real well-prepared Sprite. Uh, Barney, uh, Doc Bass was the one that had it. I had my money together and I was arrived uh, at the Doc Bass's place and so I sold that about two hours ago. That was on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I went and bought an H modified. I had never run the car, never raced it until I, I think I started the engine once. I never uh, drove it until I unloaded it here. And uh, I think I asked you some questions because you had a jab rope just like I did. So I got out there and uh, practiced and the guy that bought my car was on the pole, and I was on the outside pole with the, with the mod, with my H modified. And they dropped the green flag, and of course, I, I think I had a little grudge there. I kind of cut him off at the start. I led the first lap, and, but he got around me. And, uh, but anyway, I, that was my first racing trophy. It was here. And uh, after that, why well, I, I went on to uh, got my national license. Uh, I ended up with uh, at uh, Daytona Beach uh, later on that that, that year. Oh, I'm gonna be here too. But that's that was my talk. My name's Dean Elder. I am standing up. I'm high most of the time. <laughs> I'd like to add a little more to my experience uh, because I was part of that initial group of fellows, uh, Ray and Walt and Paul Sport. I, I may have been the regional executive at that time or about that time. I know the excitement of, of actually building the track in Des Moines was pretty high. Uh, the Des Moines Valley region has always been tuned in, one of the better ones as far as I'm concerned, and their expectations have been high, and the, the Chuck Stomana driving to Road America or wherever, taking all day and all night, we wanted a racetrack in, in the Des Moines area. So ultimately, we had uh, a wonderful track. John Mailer, who was a club member, who went on to be an Indianapolis driver and drive some for the Penske team, his idea was to have the track north of town, and of course Paul and Ray and the others prevailed, and this is where it is. My recollection of the, the first uh, race is, uh, of course, the excitement. Uh, it was pretty spartan here as compared to Road America. Uh, Bud Severance was the chief steward, and he had flowing white hair, and he literally did walk on water or thought he could. So, uh, <laughs> It was a very exciting time. Some of the more experienced race people from the South, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, brought beautiful cars here. Uh, Maseratis, Ferraris, the big Corvettes. Uh, and to see them on this track uh, around this first turn was, was pretty exciting. There was a driver from the St. Louis area named Dick Durant, and I think Dick went on to the national championship in one of Ed Allsbury's cars, but he drove some modified cars. He was an engineer with McDonnell Douglas 
but he built something out of Pontiac carts. And when he would <coughs> press this little hill here, all four wheels would be in the air of that old flop of Pontiac as it went past some of these uh, fancy cars. I remember the USAC stock car race here, which was uh, delightful in that those fellows drive cars fast every day. And you'd watch them on the back straight if you were on the bridge that they talked about. They might be sitting there with their head on their arm smoking a cigarette as they went down there and up to the well, It was a very wet spring, and I remember several of the cars ended up off in the water with the drivers sitting there on the roofs waiting to you. Okay. So this has been a, a great place, a lot of wonderful memories. Uh, this region and the people who have raced here have contributed a great deal to the thing that we enjoy and love doing. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, this interest is surviving and uh, keeping everybody in the loop. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, try to talk loud enough. Uh, my name is Glenn Branstad. I'm a native Iowan. Well, you might be able to guess my last name. But I've spent all my working career in Illinois. So. Uh, I think I only ran, got over here to run one race. That was the uh, September race in 63. And uh, that was with an alpha, the production alpha. See, my name showed up the results in some of those. Uh, got third in class. <laughs> well, the trophies were a little bigger than that year. I <laughs> 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 have a button left from that race. I thought the only one daily I could find. <laughs> but uh, what I remember about the race is chasing a Corvette with a 1300cc Alpha <laughs> and finally get by it. <laughs> Probably an unusual cornering technique for the uh, little fish up opening turn. Uh, what I was doing was pretty much straightening out all of the uh, squiggles. But when I got ready for that turn, instead of taking the classical line and going over to make the turn as wide as possible, I went up the inside, which gave me the net I get a really tight turn. I would just go down as far as possible on the inside, throw the car sideways, self up a low gear, and do a burnout. <laughs> call what you can do with 1300 cc in the burnout. <laughs> but yeah, I got one lap around this morning, and this is really a busy course. I don't remember how busy it was. <laughs> but, uh, I, I've been involves racing one way or another for like 55 years now, so that's a go kart race. So, so I got one thing I forgot about SCCA early on. They were kind of easy. And uh, I didn't have a Nomex fireproof suit, you know, so you could get a pair of coveralls and soak them in borax, flame retardant net, and that was your racing suit. I, I still have mine. <laughs> <laughs> then, after I got more uh, experience, I got my next set. Now here, here is what was offered then, and a few years later, a uh, very cheap, says no max, driver suit. Then after I got really good, or rich, this is then what came up after that, a full no max suit. Worth the bucks. I don't remember what they cost. You remember what they, what they cost? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, that was a lot of money. Yeah. 
Uh, first but, hey, I just thought I, you know, I forgot to tell you about that. I thought you'd like to know what we, what we had to kind of learn and go with. My first writing suit was the Big Mac. I think they got it for five bucks. Yeah. Yep. Uh, get the, Dipped it? And, uh, yeah. And then when you go through tech, they just say, well, look, we need to re-dip this because there's a crease here. It's not, uh, doesn't have all the stuff in it. Doesn't have all the stuff in it. Yeah. They uh, still have that. And they got rocks after a couple of years. <laughs> got rocks or whatever a couple of years before it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it. One of the founding members of this club's name was Grant Crenshaw. And Grant was a really early racer. He raced at the old Iowa City Airport races back in the early 50s. Grant was kind of a character, and uh, for those who remember, that might be very mildly put. <laughs> we were up at Mankato or some place, and those of us who had slow production cars, on those airport courses, we might go 80 or 90 miles an hour, but those fever modified echidnas were awfully fast. And I remember Grant coming back in the pits, he had his dip coveralls on and he said if you ever notice that when you get urine on this it turns to suit brown <laughs> <laughs> so when that guy went by me I looked down and my suit turned brown <laughs> <laughs> so we'll uh, go ahead and open it up here for questions here from the crowd but, uh, what corners on Greenwood made your suits turn brown? <laughs> How many corners are there? <laughs> Did Jerry Titus run this course at all? I don't remember if he was with the Shelby team the year they were here. I, I think Lou Spencer was driving for them and uh, Miles. Ken Miles, of course. I love I, I, the thing I remember most was how spectacular they were. They had the King Cobras here, the Cooper modified cars. And I think Dave McDonald maybe was driving one of those. But they garaged in Indianola. And they just drove the Warren County Sheriff crazy driving those cars up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Hall and Half Sharp and all of those famous old names were here. This was a place they wanted to come. Very sporting. Yeah, and I remember that those races. I put my right in my hand. Remember the way we got the technical expression when they came from Buster G. Island. I didn't even look at the cars. I thought they were just me. I stood right behind the pits. They had Shelby and his pits. Paul had his pits. Somebody has cover all around like he wished for. Ten miles out there, just running around, just tearing at the track up, chasing the ball. One time he goes by, and Chubb said, Give me that. They didn't have radio set. Here's a black boy, what's up? I'm about to show you. Gerald came back, and I saw it, and said, Get home. Next time he went by, and gave him Chubb a finger. He's the last player in the race car, and he just woke up and took the brakes out of him. <laughs> I think those were the Chaparral cars. Yeah, we're Chaparral. Yeah, was the wing car. Yeah, yeah. Your comment about 1,300 cc's. I, I remember. I'm sure the race was here. Uh, Lynn Blanchard, who was a Wisconsin driver, and I think he may have won the national championship in, in Jeep production. He was torn down after the race because he just ran away and hit everybody, only to find three or four burned valves. So this comment about ability and horsepower, <laughs> there is a balance there. <laughs> Wayne. What about that guy with the Morgan that won the race with the Chaparral? Well, I think that was Lou Spencer, but was that here or was that at Road America? No, that was here. Because well, I was on the scoring team. Those Super Morgan, so it's Morgan plus fours, were just extremely fast. Yeah, he took first against Chaparral. And they was blue. Uh, huh? I'm sure it was Luke Spencer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was here because I was on the scoring team. Yeah. 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 Questions? Yes, sir. 
Uh, he mentioned burn up the brakes on that on that Shelby. How? I mean, we've got some pretty fast corners out there in terms of downhills and like just coming right in the corner. How was braking? I mean, did you just kind of like squeeze and hope? Or <laughs> I drove an H modified, which really didn't require any brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Going fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, but they certainly did. When I drove my H modified, I was in fourth gear just shortly out of the last turn. You didn't have to let up until you got down there, down the bottom of the hill. You went through, I think, four turns, wide open, and let up a little bit because if you said you didn't have to jump the brakes that much. And then the next turn we kind of went uphill, so you didn't have to get in the brakes that much in, in, uh, again. So. But uh, another thing I was going to say about the, the tires we had were T4 Goodyear's, and the joke used to go out to the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the track manager hate to see you spin because you might prove the track. <laughs> <laughs> On the H modified, Ed Altbury, who built our cars, his cars were all Riverside specials from Ward. They were about this wide, and in a, on a rainy track, those skinny tires generally did much better than the big fat, go fast tires. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, this is a recent stock class, and some of the big main drivers came here as well. Maybe the big main drivers weren't big names at that point, but I'm curious if uh, you guys. Had to inter intermingle with some of these uh, big drivers, or if they sort of had their own little club. Maybe a little bit about what that was like in this period. I know modern big name drivers uh, sometimes have a little bit of a self belief I don't know if they case back in the I think the race car is a denominator that brings all people together. And in those days, the Holiday Inn on Gray's Lake was kind of race headquarters, either that or Johnny and Kay's. And uh, I think we had breakfast with Jim Hall and Hack Sharp one day. It's just sit down. If you need a place to sit down, sit down. So uh, that little car is uh, makes everybody's interest, piques their interest about the same. Because I got pictures of Jim Hall and Carol Shelby, and they just kind of stopped when I took their picture. I've got a picture right here of Carol Shelby, and Carol Shelby, he's just mingling with the, with the Nazis. So. And if I could carry that a little farther, the had to stop me because this was his first road track and he started to the left. <laughs> He's never been on road courses, but so we go this way. He never did, they got the car running, they just built the engine and put it up over here. And he's leaking water. A bunch of us are in the pitch trying to help him. You know, we're trying to help him. We sent a guy to town, he said, stop me. But radio right didn't work. They never did this. He drove all the way to Albuquerque, California, back here to race in that race. Yeah. Was it possible in your class to uh, pass other drivers on that hairpin? Oh, sure. That has something to do with the tension in the panel spencer. <laughs> 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 get a lot of cars kind of down through the hair. Got a good run for it. Uh, that would that would you go on the outside? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just try to straighten it out. I tell you what, this was really a handy course. And small cars, road I can't imagine big monsters, but I had a little off 
he was great. He was fast and did well. But still, when you had your hands full, you go through some of those cars, you go down that back right here, the car you pull by this arm. Come over this hill. Of course, you'd like you said, he's not going to put it here, he's great. And pull this up, go over my gosh. That thing was like 65 feet wide. Now, if you think about remember that big thing? Go down and get a big thing. I have a, a video for a sort of eight millimeter movies of a Corvette coming over the this, this front straight here. And he started to spin and slid all the way almost to the next corner and then slid off the road and then put it back in tips over. Was that 1963 with September Rising? What, what year? 63 with September Rising? I think so. Yeah. That's our car. Was it our car? <laughs> 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 I drive all the way from Alabama to try to find out if anybody had anything. You know, memorabilia, pictures, nothing. Kind of like right here. Right. So, uh, you check it out there. All right. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's <amazing. laughs> right, worth the trip. Yeah, Bill McLaughlin was the right person. Okay. I remember from Oklahoma when you said people from Oklahoma. I wonder if anybody remember that. And in '63, they uh, tried to lead up. They made a speed track over the hill and down the fast part of the track and down the last part. And they kept calling out, phone calls, that's this, and that's the right. said, that call back just set a new record in the speed track. <laughs> the cars I thought was the most impressive was the Alba Porsches, the Alba Mark 8s. God, they come over that hill and we're, you know, we were still, had our foot in the carburetor. They were on the brakes to, to, to make the turn back. Oh, they were. I mean, they get on the brakes and they just think they're for fast. If there's one thing I still remember, and it's been a long time since I've been around race cars, is the smell of clutch burning and tires. <laughs> that is the smell of race. Wow. <laughs> but this is a fun time. You could always tell the guy that had competition linings in the grapes. They smell what? What were the accommodations like here? Did people camp out like they did at Winsville? Uh, yeah, well, I never camped here, so I can't tell how I can tell. Except it would have been on this side of the track, and this field back here. Of course, this was not a building then. Uh, all, all this there. Actually, when you go drive the track, especially down the back side over there, it used to be, when we just raced here, it was pretty open. Now there's trees everywhere. Of course, 50 years, a lot of trees. It was scary trying to race on that thing, but they got three or two goals. All right, well, hey, can we round of applause here for these guys?